Hey there, with AgriSpray Drones. If you've paid attention to our other videos, you probably have seen the one where I talked about things I didn't like about the EA Vision J100. And if you remember, the vast majority of that was software based. Either things we didn't like, things we wanted to uh, change, or features we wanted to add. And there's been lots of updates uh, over the past several weeks here. So I thought it'd be good to give you guys kind of an update of what we've been working on, what EA Vision has been working on with us, um, and show you what's kind of coming next as well. Because this is the first spray drone in the U.S. that it is, it's an iterative improvement upon itself every single week. So what you see is not what you get. What you see is what you get today. And it will get progressively better and better and better every single week until we reach the point where we think, all right, we've got everything we need and more. So let's go through uh, everything that we've tested. Uh, we'll do droplet size testing first. We'll look at the US app now that's live. Uh, we'll look at software updates and then we'll look at the 4G connectivity, which we've uh, just done some preliminary testing on here now. Okay, so starting with the, uh, the droplet size testing. Um, so if you remember in the settings on the J100 that there, uh, you go from 10 to 300. Now we knew we can get more than 300. So we know there's software changes where we can actually make that selectable. We had to actually test what those droplet sizes are so that, you know, when I, you select 500, you're getting 500. So let's go through kind of a deep dive here and just look at the testing we've done and how this nozzle actually works. So this is the inside of an EA Vision J100 atomizer. It's a very robust atomizer. We actually cut it um, with a die grinder just to show you guys the inside. Two motors instead of one, like most other spray drones, uh, top and bottom motor. Um, and then this is your ESC, which is right there. ESC is right there, it plugs in right there. So your ESC is actually independent of the motors, which is really cool. No other spray drone has this. Um, and there's your shaft that goes on the inside. Uh, and then you have three different discs. This is your disc combo number one, disc combo two, disc combo three, or just disc two or three and uh, two and three. Um, so I'll jump over here to, oh, and before I do, um, the reason there's, there's two discs and two different motors is because each motor can work independently of uh, the other one. Um, and so this is the current, like the, in the micron size settings on the remote, um, this is kind of a simplified chart of that. Uh, so at 10 microns, both gears, the plate, uh, the plate and the gear uh, RPM are very high and they spin opposite of each other. And then it decreases RPM on both of those until you get to that about that 100 micron size setting. And then both plates actually spin the same direction. And then you get above that and the gear RPM actually turns off. Uh, it doesn't spin at all. It's just the inner disc. So that's why there's two different discs because you can have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do, frankly. It's a very, very robust, uh, robust nozzle, but obviously a lot of testing has to be done to know what's going on there. So this is our testing results simplified, of course. Um, and this was all done with a drop scope. Um, so this is the drop scope, uh, our, our account. We've done 85 analyses and uh, 387 cards uh, were tested, spray cards were tested. So on the left is the remote setting where we actually set it to in the remote, um, the micron size. And then on the right is the actual VMD um, that was tested on the card. So what was actually hitting the ground, uh, the real drop was hitting the ground. Um, and you see there's some discrepancies here as we look at what was in the setting and what the actual VMD was. And we did this for three different configurations of disk, which are the uh, three basic configurations. Configuration one here, which is the standard comes on the drone, um, smaller inner plate uh, with the larger outer plate, the, not, the droplets come out of these little uh, orifices right here. Uh, configuration two is just that same inner plate, no outer plate. And then configuration three is a, a separate, uh, a new uh, inner plate for larger droplets. So it gets larger, smaller to larger as you look on the sheet here. Um, so you see there's some discrepancies uh, here. Uh, 10 seems to be actually 10, although that's very hard to test with the drop scope. 100 was actually 150. We're actually getting 150 on the cars, not 100. Um, and then of course, as we go to this uh, single disc by itself, 300 was actually 500. 
Um, and then the larger disk, 300, was actually 620. And so what we've sent to EA Vision here is this chart so that they can change it in the software where you'll actually be able to select what disk you have. This picture of the disk will pop up. You select what disk you have, you confirm that is installed, and then it changes your scale. So the scale that you'll see on the remote will not say 10 to 300 when you have this disk selected. It'll say 130 to 620. And this is actually tested here in the US the droplets that are hitting the ground. So you can have a high level of confidence, um, given the weather conditions, of course, and product uh, type, that this setting here is what you're going to be getting uh, whenever you select it. Okay, um, and then we did, uh, so we did have um, a partner here in the industry do some other testing for us using kind of a, a spectrometer, I think, uh, laser, some kind of a thing. I don't know the, the details on that 100% right now. Um, but this right here shows you with that that one basic uh, inner disk um, without the outer disk, what the drone is actually doing at these different volumes, output output volumes, um, and what it was set to right here. So there you see, obviously, yes, it is higher. We're getting over 500 at the highest setting. Um, so that's droplet, um, droplet update there. Um, and this will be updated in the remote uh, in due time. Okay, so next let's look at the US app. Um, I'm going to jump over here to my screen. You're looking at my phone right now. Um, so this is an app. It is a web app. So you actually, um, if I, well, all right, you can see my kids here. Uh, <laughs> so, or at least one of my kids. So if I select right here, EA Vision CRM, and then it pulls it up, and there you go. Uh, so the U.S. app is live. The server is on the AWS platform here in the U.S. Now, just because it's live does not mean that we're done changing it. There will be changes uh, and updates, um, some wording and some translations and some functionality will continue to be updated, uh, but it is live. And you can actually now make your own account at the bottom there. Do you have an account? No, sign up or you make your own account. This is basically kind of like your smart farm equivalent here. Uh, you've got you know all your different you know operation overview, um, how many acres you uh, sprayed, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the functionality for like the actual what you spread and sprayed uh, is not loaded into the system just yet because of the transition from Chinese to U.S. Uh, app. Okay, and then over here we have our different apps that we can use within the system, plot management. Loads up all of our different plots. Uh, you can zoom into those and get down to an actual plot. There you go. Uh, select those and see the flight records and all that kind of stuff there. Uh, you can actually uh, map. So you can create you know, map source Google. So you can actually create your own uh, map or boundary. Uh, we've got team management in here. We've got demand manager, which is basically kind of like um, our different, uh, uh, I guess what you what you would call um, uh, your work orders, right? Your different work orders for your different clients. All that can be set up in here. Operation manager. This is things we've actually you know flying, flown, and sprayed and whatnot. Uh, you can click on that, um, and there you see your applications. So a lot of this stuff uh, is is good, is live, is working. Uh, some of this stuff is being uh, changed and updated as we go, but all housed in the US on a US server available on your phone uh, and, uh, let's see, yeah, and also available on a web platform as well. So really simple. Uh, I think that's all I've got there. All right, software updates. We're going to go over to Jira. Well, we are, have switched off of our Google Sheets uh, onto Jira uh, to work with the EA Vision team on all these software updates moving forward, uh, just to make things clear and faster. And they now have eight developers uh, working on this team uh, to make things happen quickly because we have lots in progress and lots to do yet. Um, so over here on the left, you can see the current issues that are not in progress just yet. Uh, right here, you can see what EA Vision is working on and we communicate with them uh, on a daily basis. You can see what we are testing uh, right here. 
uh, what we've been approved. Basically, this all flows back and forth. When we test it, we say approved. They push the update uh, live, so you can update it on your drone. Uh, and then this over here are the uh, are the updates, the app updates that have actually been pushed and are live. Uh, this says seven. Uh, there have actually been more like 15, I believe. Uh, some of these uh, we didn't port over to the system just yet. But you can see there's a lot that has been done. Uh, soft manual landing, critical power override. Uh, stick down to disable motors during, you know, prior to takeoff. Uh, there's been a bunch of stuff that we've gotten pushed that we wanted, that we didn't like, and some stuff pushed that uh, we just wanted because we thought it'd be cool. And then a lot of stuff in here uh, that they're currently working on. Uh, so a lot of really cool stuff to come. Okay, the last one here, 4G connectivity. And I'm just going to give you guys kind of a... Um, uh, a little a little preview of what this is. We'll be doing a full video of how this actually works and how you can get it on your J100. Um, but basically what this is, I just play the video here. What you see is we've got no connectivity to the drone. So the remote was inside. We had this inside the building. Uh, the drone was outside. We had it basically behind a barrier that we couldn't get connection from the remote to the drone. Um, so the remote is on Wi-Fi or you know 4G, same difference. And the drone has a SIM card in it and it is connected to the internet as well. And the signal, what you're seeing on the screen, the drone flying, the progress happening, the radar, all that stuff, all that is being communicated to the remote over 4G. Meaning you don't actually have to have you know, a signal from the remote to the drone. You just have to have the remote connect to the internet, the drone on 4G connect to the internet, and you will be able to see everything except for your FPV footage. So we'll be doing more testing on this, show you guys uh, what the limitations are, what you can and can't do uh, in the very near future. Stay tuned for that. We'll be bringing you guys more update videos as more things change. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to a live demo of a J100. Uh, we can help you out there too. Thanks. See ya.